Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition stops stories. Healthcare sector is the primary focus for the government of St. Lucia as it enters into a new financial year. ICT and TVET identified as the foundation to building the workforce of the future. The OECS and the RSS sign a memorandum of understanding. All that plus the latest in news development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. The all-important healthcare sector is a prime focus for the government of St. Lucia as it enters into a new financial year. That declaration was made by Governor-General Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack as he delivered the throne speech opening a new session of Parliament. The Governor-General stated that government intends to continue strengthening primary health care and public health, advance work on national health insurance, and implement measures for quality assurance. Plans for the opening of the Owen King EU Hospital and the St. Jude's Hospital are also advancing. The progress made to date on commissioning and operationalization of the Owen King EU Hospital is noteworthy and work will continue towards full transition of all outpatient and inpatient services within the shortest time possible. The decommissioning of the Victoria Hospital has become imperative and my government is taking urgent action to achieve this. Equally crucial is the completion of the St. Jude Hospital based on its new design with, with a timeline of 2021. This will be approached by means of phased transitioning into the new facility. Sir Neville went on to announce the implementation of a national quality management system in order to ensure that the healthcare system satisfies international quality standards. The requisite legislation, the Governor-General said, will be considered for enactment during this session of Parliament. Another sector to receive due attention in the 2019-2020 financial year is education. In his throne speech, the Governor-General indicated that government considers education as the foundation for building the workforce of the future. To realize this, two priorities are being explored the mainstreaming of information and communication technology, ICT, and the strengthening and expansion of the technical and vocational education and training TVET program. The ICT in education policy and strategy provides a clear outline and context for St. Lucia's e-education drive and encompasses our Smart Nation initiative. It will facilitate the transformation of our learning spaces into smart classrooms incorporating infrastructure and instructional materials which satisfy, satisfy the requirements of integration, computer coding and robotics training. Introduced in 2018 will remain a regular feature on the education agenda. The TVET program will continue with its focus on technical competencies, together with the soft and employability skills demanded by employers. Assessments will be undertaken of the feasibility of repurposing existing school plans to accommodate pre-K classes. This, Sir Neville said, would ensure that more children benefit from early childhood education. Secondary schools which may be fit for the introduction of six forms, will also be identified. The importance of productivity to the overall performance of the local economy and the nation was emphasized recently by the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council. The Productivity Council, during a presentation to fifth formers of the Cicero Secondary School on productivity, showed the effect of procrastination on their personal and collective productivity. More from Glenn Simon. The week of April 1st to 5th was literally the final week of school for the fifth form students of the Ciceron Secondary School as they set off to write CXD examinations commencing later that month. Shalon Thebels, homeroom teacher for one of the fifth form classes, invited the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC, to make a presentation to the students to help motivate them as they prepare to further their studies or enter the world of work. 
At the Cicero Secondary School, we strive to cater for the holistic child. So we don't just want them to have what it is in school. We want them to be molded for what is out there, what they would be presented with on the outside. So being productive is a very major part of being for living in society. The topic, Procrastination Kills Productivity, was presented to the energetic yet attentive performers by yours truly, Glenn Simon, communication specialist with the NCPC. The NCPC provides timely and effective recommendations to policymakers, the private sector and other stakeholders on issues relating to competitiveness and productivity in St. Lucia. As you prepare for CXE, as you prepare to enter the field of work, as you prepare to write to other schools for placement, we wanted them to understand that they should not delay. Procrastination really is the intentional and um, habitual delay of starting or completing a task knowing full well that it will have negative consequences. And productivity, we brought the message of productivity to them that it is really what you get out from what you put in. Many of the students pledged to work towards reducing their level of procrastination and welcomed the video presentations and discussions on the topic. Fifth former Romanus Henry said he found the topic very interesting and now realizes how procrastination can impact his future. I can, I can procrastinate a lot. Um, so. Like I find that topic help educate me and help to put me straight for me to not to procrastinate, procrastinate anymore. So therefore I'll have to build a focus and a mentality for me to be proactive in my schoolwork and in also in other activities. Desri Joseph said as she prepares for exams, her takeaway was to create a timetable for herself to decide how and when to do certain tasks in order to reduce procrastination. At this stage you're supposed to be studying and if you keep leaving your studies, I will do it sometime, I'll do it later. That keeps you back from gaining some knowledge for your exams. Simon expressed his delight on behalf of the NCPC to present to the students, who he remarked are important stakeholders within the country. The fifth form students were presented with various tokens of appreciation and participated in a tongue twister competition amongst themselves. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Unit, Glenn Simon reporting. The St. Lucia Network of Rural Women Producers Babano Cluster is to receive governmental assistance in securing a base for production. Anisia Antoine explains. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, recently toured a number of the island's agriculture facilities, including the Fordasso agro-processing plant. Minister Joseph indicated that the government fully understands the difficulty currently faced by the women of the St. Lucia Network of Rural Women Producers Babunu Cluster, who have indicated that producing from their home poses several challenges for them. The minister assured that the necessary steps are being taken to ensure the group is provided with a proper facility. In the case of Fonaso, uh, like, like we explained to the person who is listing the facility from us, Paradise Foods, that arrangements have to be made to accommodate the rural women of, from the cluster from, from Babono. Um, I'm happy that Ica is on board and we're now seeing how we can, in the short term, Make, make provision for them to operate um, within the existing facility, of course with the intention of building a separate structure for them on the compound um, where they can continue with their operations. A member of the St. Lucia Network of Rural Women, Producers Babono Cluster and Entrepreneur, highlighted the many challenges currently faced by the cluster having to produce outside of a facility. She emphasized the need for a designated workspace, revealing that the cluster has been considering getting their own facility. We have a lot of products that um, we are doing and we are doing it from home. And we'd really, we have our labeling, our packaging, and we feel it's time that we're able to put our products out and get to the supermarket level and other areas. Um, our well, capacity for now, it's been low since um, the interest. A lot of the women have lost the interest, but with what we have right now, the members that are there, we are doing quite well. So all we need now is just a space so we can start doing our processing. We had suggested that um, we were looking to get a piece of crown lands where we would set up 
our own little building, our own space. So we don't know if that's still a, if there is a way that we can work this out. The Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives Minister reaffirmed the Ministry's commitment to the cluster asking for its patience as the government seeks to improve the current situation. I'm happy that um, we are able to identify a clear path moving forward and I'm sure when we sit down and we look at the resources and, and with the support of ECA, we can come up with some clear schedules, timelines, so at least we can monitor ourselves as it pertains to for us. On the 24th of February 2019, two processing plants located in Angers Miku, one specifically allocated for the processing of cocoa, were officially handed over to the St. Lucia Network of Rural Women Producers Miku Cluster. For the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. What is money laundering? Money laundering is the concealment of the origins of illegally obtained money, typically by means of transfers involving financial institutions or legitimate businesses. There are three steps in the process of money laundering. One, placement. This is the movement of illegitimately obtained cash from its source into circulation through financial institutions. Two, layering. This is the act of concealing the source of that money using a series of complex transactions and bookkeeping tricks. Three, integration. This is the movement of previously laundered money into the economy, mainly through the financial institutions, and thus such monies appear to be normal business earnings. What is terrorist financing? Terrorist financing provides funds for terrorist activity. It may involve funds raised from legitimate sources such as donations, profits from businesses and charitable organizations, as well as from criminal sources such as the drug trade, the smuggling of weapons, fraud, kidnapping and extortion. There is an interrelation between terrorist financing and proliferation financing, which is the act of providing funds or financial services used in the acquisition, manufacture or transport of weapons of mass destruction. How does money laundering and terrorist financing affect St. Lucia? St. Lucia can lose its reputation and international credibility. More violent and organized crimes and corruption. Penalties for the financial sector and loss of correspondent banking. St. Lucia will be evaluated in 2019 with respect to its money laundering and terrorist financing regimes. How can you help? Get involved. Learn about the threat that money laundering and terrorist financing pose to St. Lucia. And cooperate with financial and non-financial institutions when information is requested. Money laundering and terrorist financing are crimes with penalties of up to $1 million and imprisonment of up to 10 years or both. A message brought to you by the National Anti-Money Laundering Oversight Committee and the Attorney General's Chambers. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome once again to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, says he will continue to advance a national sports evolution in St. Lucia and that the Sporting Infrastructure the Redevelopment Program is one such move in achieving this. Minister Estefan made the disclosure during a sword turning ceremony for the redevelopment of the Sufre Mini Stadium and the Ruby Cricket Ground. As Minister with Responsibility for Sports, along with the support of the Prime Minister and my other cabinet colleagues, I have been blessed with the great opportunity of service to our nation. And it is my aim to advance our national sports evolution. And as Mr. Logabi told you, we will be doing this island-wide. It's just a pity we cannot do all of them at once. <laughs> if that was possible, this is what was, it was going to happen. The commencement of work on the upgrade of the Sufre Mini Stadium and the cricket ground 
will come an improvement in the quality of sporting talent in the district and make Sufre a force to be reckoned with in sports nationally. That's the view of Parliamentary Representative the Honourable Herod Stanislaus as he spoke during the South Turning Ceremony. Today marks the beginning of the complete rehabilitation of this mini stadium. A rehabilitation which is going to include the laying down of an IAAF certified 400 meter eight lane track. It is also going to receive a brand new FIFA certified artificial or what we call synthetic turf for football. It is also going to receive three new courts, one specifically for netball for our young girls, our young ladies, the other one multipurpose, which will be for volleyball, tennis, and maybe with consultation with the Basketball um, Association Basketball, because as you know, we have a basketball court in town next to the hospital, so we do not want to duplicate. And the third one is going to be a court for five-on-five five football, or what we call futsal, a court where our local um, footballers could train, they could practice and so on, even do warm-ups before matches begin. The Youth Empowerment Project is galvanizing the talent of the youth in a number of communities in the city of Castries as part of their public relations and sensitization drive on the initiatives being undertaken during the project. One such intervention is a logo competition which has some precise guidelines. Joanne Husbands is project coordinator. You must be within the four target communities of New Village, Barnard Hill, Conway and New Village and, um, we, and you must be able to you must be of the age of 10 to 35 years. The, the design must be yours, yours, not be copyrighted. And any submissions will, be, will belong to us. Um, so it will be our property once upon submission. And the submissions can also be um, submitted on CD if you like. And we really want to ensure that we, you, attach, you attach your contact information your name, your number, your social media handles, whether it be on Facebook or Instagram, so that we could also tag you when you submit your, your submissions to us. The logo competition runs until the end of April, Youth Month. And speaking of Youth Month, the first official activity held was a speech festival, which concluded at the Financial Center last week. Dr. Paul Fort of Team Action International Incorporated said there was marked improvement shown by participants of the four-day event. A lot more persons came out. We saw a lot of persons who started on Monday very shy. At the end of yesterday evening, openly speaking, a lot more persons come out to take part in the competition this morning. And so I think it would have done the job of getting one, students to be aware of their surroundings, two, students to be more participatory in programs, and three, students to understand their developmental role in helping themselves succeed. The speech festival facilitated poetry workshops, public speaking workshops, a debate expo, and a gender equality discussion. That's our wrap from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The OECS and the Regional Security System, the RSS, have signed an MOU to better protect, police, and preserve the ocean space in the Eastern Caribbean as the birthright of every Caribbean national. As the major shared resource between OECS member states, the ocean plays a vital role in the air we breathe, transportation, recreation to food, medicine, and economic benefits. According to the OECS Director General Dr. Didicus Jules, the MOU will see the implementation of a $6.3 million Caribbean Regional OECS Policy and Strengthening Action Plan crop to ensure the space is managed sustainably to leverage economic opportunities for member states. ECROP is a comprehensive initiative that seeks to address the multifaceted complexity of our seascape. We are taking account of our ocean space as a fluid geographic asset that is threatened by climate change, by unsustainable economic practices, by pollution, and a host of other challenges. The grant agreement that we saw signed a while ago between the RSS and the Caribbean Development Bank 
all um, signed today will support the implementation of some of the ECROP strategic actions as well. This is a good case illustrative of the exponential mathematics of integration and cooperation. One plus one equals 11 in this case. Deliverables under the 6.3 million US dollar ECROP project, which is being executed by the Commission, will include an enhanced ECROP by year end. The MOU was signed on behalf of the six independent member states of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Barbados. The signing took place on Friday the 5th of April at the RSS Council of Ministers meeting in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. I was in my neighborhood. It was a very dark night and I decided to go for a drink by a bar. On my way from the bar, I felt this thing to my right leg. And when I look back, I knew it was a, a, a full of snake. If you happen to be in an area where there are snakes and you are bitten by a snake, this is what you do. You call for help and try to reach the Victoria Hospital within one or three hours. You will be seen immediately. My uncle at the time was a police officer, called the um, Victoria Hospital and told them that we can be known for snake bite. It is the only facility on the island which has a protocol and a treatment plan where you can be treated adequately. We call them before you go there so they can prepare for you. And rest assured that there are adequate supplies of antivenom with doctors who have been trained in the treatment protocols of the snake bite. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information, uh, Gouvernement de la CIS, ACGIS, ACBP Television National, PIA, NTN, Capazato, Nouvelle Creole, Presato, Primus Hutchinson. Quatrième session de Wazium Parlement, puis pour mardi le 9 avril, membre de la Conseil de l'Assemblée, a dit bon matin, et membre de la Sénat, a dit bon matin, a dit bon matin, a dit bon matin, a dit Côté UDA, tu es joué ensemble à la session pour recevoir un message au gouverneur général, c'est Emmanuel Neville Snack. Le comité de finances s'est assemblé à la session à 10h30 du matin aussi. Le 9 avril, il y a eu une visite à l'estimation, il y a eu une ça. Ça, c'est le 9 de la session à plusieurs officiers du gouvernement de la session qui pourraient quoi, officiers diplomatiques et l'autre agence, tu es présent à la session pour un témoignage pour qu'on ait fait ça là. Le gouverneur général a été passé de Paulette Louise, qui est présent, et le chef de la Conseil a été passé, M. Matthew Roberts, qui est là aussi, l'autre membre du Sénat, le docteur Charmaine Gardner, et le monsieur Robert Rivers, et le premier ministre a été passé, c'est-à-dire le docteur Von Lewis, et puis le représentatif de l'Élysée, qui est là, comme des habitudes, il a tenu un grand pouvoir qui le gouverneur général Emmanuel Neville Snack a examiné avant qu'il entre en Caille Consit pour délivrer le grand adresse. Caille Consit, Caille Ensemble, mercredi, le 10 avril à 10h après-midi, jeudi le 11 avril et vendredi le 12 à 9h matin pour tenir débat à ce budget. Le comité financier a aussi présenté le rapport. Caille Consit a adopté le rapport du comité financier à ce budget pour l'année 2019 pour 2020 en hauteur de 1 billion. 691 millions de dollars, 689 mille dollars. Si on veut commencer à adresser à la Conseil, à conseil pour l'année la paix et pour considérer le Parlement comme place là pour la nation, commander bon service comme ce peuple qui met place place là à parler. Il va être pour rester hors mes prix et ma change et qui crie pour ni face à le gouvernement et l'opposition, pour respecter l'honneur qu'il y a conçu pour les petits enfants nous et l'autre génération pour venir. Ce n'est pas déclaré que le gouvernement a implémenté WEC pour adresser effectivement la loi pour gouverner l'éducation, les services de santé, l'agriculture, l'affaire touristique et à parmi l'autre. Le gouvernement général a aussi placé en pile importance à ce qui est un petit pays qui a développé et puis autant de talent et d'intelligence qui n'est pas bonne. Sinon, ce n'est pas ça veut dire que quand le Parlement nous a des ressources invalables et 
par conséquence de ça, qu'a embrassé la responsabilité force institution qui a posé force liée à son nom, un pays. Le jeunesse pays a, qui a accompli, avec qui a accompli grand succès dans l'affaire sportive avec l'autre disciple et business, trouvé un grand coup de chapeau en Kai Concept Madi. Il y a un grand adresse pour ouvrir une session nouveau en Kai Parlement. Le gouverneur général Emmanuel Neville Snack félicite à Dan Yon Hodegwe, accomplissement M. Johan Ndoujo, qui prend une initiative pour tourner yon menace au Awet pour yon grand business national, régional et international. Ce n'est pas faire référence, jeune garçon, pour gagner grand honneur Commonwealth là, pour pays Canada et pour les Caraïbes là. En ligne sport, éliminer le succès Levin Spencer pour venir premier septicien, pour trouver la victoire des médailles de l'or en jouer Commonwealth là, et aussi plusieurs la victoire à Caraïbes là, l'Amérique et l'Amérique c'est toi aussi. Le gouvernement a organisé un dîner en l'honneur, le 20, en hôtel Sandler's Grand, pour montrer des grandes appréciations, le gouverneur général l'a dit. Il y a l'autre mentionné, c'est Kimani Melius, qui présentement est puis West Indies Gaibi, qui a joué en Canada, avec Julian Alfred, qui a trouvé la victoire et puis médaille d'argent en joué olympique à Buenos Aires. Le débat a soubigé, a commencé, a commencé, je a commencé demain, excusez-moi, mercredi, le 11 mars à 10h après-midi. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour garder, je vous remercie une invitation pour que je puisse me considérer. Quand vous avez la vie, je vous remercie pour cette nouvelle à courir. À présent, nous avons vie pour Nisha. Merci au Pearl Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Skies are fair, becoming cloudy at times with some widely scattered showers. The Atlantic high-pressure system continues to maintain moderate easterly winds across the eastern Caribbean islands. Weak and stable conditions in the atmosphere over the region will cause some scattered showers over the islands during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour is high at present. The tide for V4 Bay was low at 2 p.m. and will be high again at 8.25 p.m. The seas moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Wednesday at 5.53 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.